Hi, welcome back to my class in business mathematics. In the last lesson, we took up the formula for obtaining the accumulated value of some principal invested or borrowed at simple interest rate. And uh, for the amount of accumulated value of principal P is given by the formula capital A equals P plus I. The accumulated value or the accumulated amount of some principal P invested or borrowed at simple interest rate is given by capital A and it is equal to the sum of the principal, the original amount borrowed or the original amount invested and the amount of interest, capital I. And capital I, the amount of interest, is given by the formula I, amount of interest, equals PIT. Amount of interest equals the principal, original amount invested or borrowed, multiplied by the interest rate in decimal number and the time or period of investment in years. For today, we will solve, we will have more examples of problems for using these two formulas. The formula for accumulated value or accumulated amount of principal P and the formula for computing the amount of interest of earned by principal P invested or borrowed at simple interest rate I for P years. For the first example, consider the following problem. An investment of 35,940 pesos accumulates to 41,035 pesos at two and one third percent. Find the period of investment. In any given problem, the first step is to identify the given values and then identify the unknown value. For this problem, 35,940 pesos is the original amount invested because the problem says an investment of 35,940. So it's understood that 35,940 pesos is the original amount invested denoted by capital P. P, the principal or the original amount invested is 35,940 pesos. And the problem further says that this original amount, 35,940 pesos, invested accumulates to 41,035 41,035 pesos and the word accumulates give us the clue that 41,035 41,035 pesos is the accumulated value of the original amount invested or the principal P of 35,940 pesos. Therefore, we write 41,035 pesos as A or the accumulated value of the principal P. We write A or accumulated value or accumulated amount of the principal 35,940 pesos is 41,035 pesos. Forty-one thousand thirty-five pesos. And 
and this is the accumulated value of this principal at uh, 2 and 1 3rd percent. And we denote the interest rate by a small letter i. Small i is 2 and 1 3rd percent. As we said in the first two lessons, if the interest rate given does not specify that it is a simple interest rate, we take the simple interest rate given as a simple interest rate. And since in this problem it is not specified what type of interest rate is 2 and 1 third percent, we take 2 and 1 third percent as a simple interest rate. And we also said in the first two lessons in business mathematics that in using the formula for computing the amount of interest capital I, the interest rate I should be in decimal number. Thus, we convert 2 and 1 third percent to decimal number. 2 and 1 third percent is, a, is an example of a mixed fraction. It contains a whole number 2 and a proper fraction 1 third. And we can write this 2 and 1 third as 2 plus 1 third. 2 plus 1 third percent. And 1 third, you may use your calculator. If you divide 1 by 3, you get uh, a repeating decimal number which is equal to 0 0.3333 the digit 3 is repeated without n so 2 plus 1 third is equal to 2 plus using your calculator 1 divided by 3 is 0.3333 without n percent And 2 plus 0 0.3333 gives us 2.3333 without n percent. And we also said from the past lessons that there are two ways by which you can convert 2.3333 without n percent to decimal number. One way is to... to to do it manually by moving the decimal point two places to the left. And after moving the decimal point, you omit the percentage sign. Let's do that. You move the decimal point two places to the left. You get one. And add zero to move the decimal point one more place to the left. We add zero and move this decimal point one more place to the left. Now the decimal number is 0 0.023333. Three is repeated without n. Thus our simple interest rate two and one third percent is equal to 0 0.023333 without n. Point zero two. 333 without n. You may add 0 before the decimal point here. And when we substitute the interest rate in the formula for computing the amount of interest, we take all the decimal numbers. We had an agreement from last meeting that we only do the rounding off in the final answer. And these are all the given. The principal is 35,940 pesos. And its accumulated value denoted by capital A is 41,035 pesos. And the simple interest rate given is 2 and 1 third percent, which is equal to 0 0.023333 is repeated without n in decimal number. 
another way to convert 2.3333% to decimal number is to divide. To use your calculator, in your calculator, you press 2.3333, you press 3 without N, and divide it by 100%. And you should get the same 0 0.02. 3333. Now, after identifying all the given information, we now identify the required or what is unknown in the problem. The problem says find the period of investment. The period of investment refers to the time t. Thus, we write the required. The required quantity is T. And our time should be in years. To find the time T, we make use of this formula, I equals PIT. Hence, the formula to use can be obtained from the formula for computing the amount of interest, capital I, given by capital I equals PIT. Because this formula contains T. And to solve for T from this equation, we divide both sides by PI, or principal times interest rate, in decimal number. We divide the right side by PI. We divide the left side by PI. And PI will cancel out from the right hand side. We get P equals P equals capital I divided by PI. This is the formula that we will used to find the unknown time t equal to the amount of interest capital I divided by the product of the principal and the interest rate in decimal number. And this formula we obtain from the formula for computing the amount of interest capital I equals p principal multiplied by I interest rate multiplied by time t in years. But the amount of interest is not, capital I, is not explicitly given in the problem. What we are given are the amount of interest, uh, sorry, the accumulated value A and the original amount invested or principal. And using these two given, the accumulated value and the principal, we can find the amount of interest, capital I, from this formula by transposing P to the left hand side. Thus, to be able to solve for T using this formula, we have to find first the amount of interest capital I. And we can find the amount of interest capital I from this formula for accumulated value. Because accumulated value A is given the amount of principal is given and to solve for the amount of interest capital I we simply transpose the original amount amount invested principal to the left hand side. We do that amount of interest capital I equals accumulated value A and we transpose the principal P to the left hand side and when we do transposition we take the opposite sign of the quantity. Since P here is positive, we transpose it to the left side, it becomes minus P. Hence these are the two formula that we will use to find the time or period of investment T in years given by amount of interest capital I divided by principal times interest rate.
And to solve first for the amount of interest capital I, we use this formula. The amount of interest capital I is the difference between the accumulated value A and the principal P. And to solve for P and capital I, we need to use calculator. We start by computing the amount of interest capital I equals to the difference of accumulated value A and the principal P because we need the amount of interest capital I to compute for the unknown time or period of investment. Thus, we start with capital I equals the accumulated value minus the principal P. And we substitute the given. Accumulated value is 41,035 pesos minus the principal P. The principal P is 35,940 pesos. And using your calculator, we compute the amount of interest. Use your calculator to compute the difference between 41,000, 41,035 pesos minus the principal 35,000. 940 pesos and you should get 5,095 pesos 5,095 pesos now we can compute for the time t or the period of investment t equals the amount of interest equals to 5,095 pesos divide by the product of the principal 35,940 pesos and the interest rate in decimal number equal to 0 0.023333 is repeated without end hence T the required period of investment equals amount of interest 5,095 pesos divide by P, the principal 35,940 pesos multiply by I or the interest rate in decimal number 0 0.02 Three, three, three. We compute this using the calculator. We have 5,995 divided by 35,940 pesos. 940 pesos. Multiply by the interest rate in decimal number 0 0.023333. You press as many, as many three as you can, as your calculator allows you. And you should get 6.2. 3 decimal places we get all the numbers first P is equal to 6.0756 no After you get the answer, you round off the, the answer to two decimal places. After the decimal point, 
you round up the decimal number to two decimal places. And after the decimal point, you round up the third digit. If you want the final answer to two decimal places, you round up the third digit from the decimal point. From the decimal point, you count three, one, two, three, and five is to be rounded off. And the rule says if the number to be rounded off is five or more, you add one to the preceding digit. That is the digit that comes before the number to be rounded off. The number to be rounded off is exactly five, so we add 1 to the preceding digit, 7. And 7 plus 1 is 8. And the final answer is P equals 6.08 years. Thus, the original amount invested of 35,940 pesos was invested for 6.08 years at the interest rate of, simple interest rate of 2 and 1 thirds percent or 0 0.02333 without end in decimal number. And after 6.08 years, the original amount invested of 35,940 pesos accumulated to 41,035 pesos, which means that the amount of interest earned equal to the difference between the accumulated value and the principal fee is 5,095 pesos. That is the amount of interest earned at the end of 6.08 years by the original amount invested or principal of 35,940 pesos. We take another example, but before that, I would like to inform you that the topics we are discussing in this course, Business Mathematics, are also contained in the course for Mathematics in the Modern World. So this topic, simple interest rate, principal, accumulated value, and amount of interest are also discussed in the course Mathematics in the Modern World. Consider the following problem. Mr. X pays 1,317 pesos interest at 5 and 3 fifths percent after one and a half years. What is the original amount borrowed? What is the total amount paid for the loan? So the problem implies that Mr. X borrowed a certain amount as a loan. And uh, as interest for this amount borrowed, Mr. X paid 1,317 pesos as the amount of interest. And this amount of interest was computed at simple interest rate. Again, it is not specified in this problem that 5 and 3 fifths percent is a simple interest rate. But we had an agreement that whenever an interest rate is given and it is not specified what type of interest rate is the rate given. We take the interest rate given as a simple interest rate. Thus, we take 5 and 3 pips percent as a simple interest rate. And this simple interest rate was used to compute the amount of interest paid 1,317 pesos. And this amount of interest was paid after one and one half years. And so we write the given data or information. The amount of interest paid is denoted by capital I. And the amount of interest paid is 1,317 1, pesos. 1,000. 317 pesos. The amount of interest rate was computed 
sorry, the amount of interest was computed at simple interest rate 5 and 3 fifths percent. And this is denoted by simple interest rate by small letter I. One letter I is five and three fifths percent. And when we use this, when we substitute this in the formula, we have to convert this to decimal number. And again, five and three fifths is a is an example of a mixed fraction combination of a whole number 5 and a proper fraction 3 over 5. And 5 3 fifths can be written as 5 plus 3 over 5. 5 plus 3 over 5 percent. And using your calculator, you divide 3 by 5 and you should get 0.6. Thus, 5 plus 3 pips equals 5 plus 0 0.6 or 0.6 percent. 3 divided by 5 is 0.6. And 5 plus 0 0.6 is 5.6. 5 5.6 is 5.6. We now convert this to 5.6%. We now convert it to decimal number and we do it manually by moving the decimal point two places to the left. You move it one time, you place the decimal point before 5 and to move, to move it one more time to the left, we should add 0. Move the decimal point one more place to the left, and you get 0 0.056, and now you omit or drop the percentage sign. Hence, 5 and 3 fifths percent equals 0 0.056. Again, you may add 0 before the decimal point. And we will not be rounding this off at this point because we will do the rounding off in the final answer. And uh, this amount of interest paid, computed at this simple interest rate, was paid after one and a half years. And it's obvious that that should be the time P. Time T is one and one half years. And we convert this also to decimal number. It's one and one half is an example of improper fraction, uh, sorry, mixed fraction, a combination of full number one and proper fraction one half. One and one half is the same as one plus one half years or one plus using your calculator you divide by one by two and you should get 0.5 years five years and add one plus 0.5 is 1.5 years Hence, the time is one and a half years is the same as 1.5 years. Now, we identify the unknown. The first question says, what is the original amount borrowed? And we know that the original amount borrowed is denoted by P, which means which stands for principal. Hence, we require the required, we write the required, we write the required, the first required is the original amount borrowed or the principal capital P. 
The second question asks, what is the total amount paid for the loan? And we know from our examples before that the total amount of uh, the principal, also known as the accumulated value of the principal, is denoted by capital A. Hence, for the, to answer the second question, we compute capital A. We write that as letter B, capital A, for the total amount paid or the accumulated value of the original amount borrowed denoted by P. To get the total amount paid, we should first compute for the original amount borrowed. And to compute for the original amount borrowed, we will use the following formula. write the formula to be used we have I equals P I P to solve for the original amount borrowed or principal we use this formula for the amount of interest capital I equals principal times interest rate in decimal number times the time in years. And we solve for phi from this formula by dividing both sides by IT. Divide the right side by IT. Divide the left side by IT. And IT will cancel out from the right side. And we get P equals capital I, P equals capital I, divided by IT. That is the formula that we will use to solve for the unknown amount, original amount borrowed or principal. Capital P equals the amount of interest. Capital I. Capital I is given 1,317 pesos. Divided by interest rate in decimal number. Interest rate in decimal number is given 0 0.056. Multiply by time T in years. And the time T in years is given. T equals 1.5 years. After we compute for the original amount borrowed or principal, we can now compute for the total amount paid. We now solve for the first unknown, the original amount borrowed or the principal P. And to solve for the principal P, we make use of this formula, which we have shown the derivation earlier. P equals, the original amount borrowed P equals the amount of interest, capital I, which is given 1,317 pesos. Divide by interest rate times time. The interest rate is small i is given in decimal number 0 0.056. Multiply by the time t in years. Time t in years is given it's 1.5 years. And we compute this using calculator. Please get your calculator and do this with me. 1,317. 1,317. One 
1,370 divide by 0.056 0.056 multiply by the time 1.5 years And the answer you should get is 15,000. This is the original answer, 15,678. 15,678.571428. Four two eight five seven one. That's the original answer fifteen thousand six hundred seventy eight point five seven one four two eight five seven one. Now we can now round this off to two decimal places. And to round this up to two decimal places, you round off the third digit after the decimal point. After the decimal point, you count three. One, two, three. And the number to be rounded off is one. Again, the rule in rounding off is that when the number to be rounded off is five or greater than five, we add one to the preceding digit. The number that comes before the number to be dropped but since one is less than five we simply drop one and all the digits after it and one is not added to the preceding digit seven and the original amount borrowed is now denoted by p is fifteen thousand 678.57 pesos. Now we can solve for letter B, the second question, as for the total amount paid for the loan. And the total amount paid is denoted by A for the total amount or accumulated value of the principal fee. And the uh, total amount or accumulated value of principal fee A is given by the sum of the principal and the amount of interest. We substitute the um, principal original amount borrowed. We have solved is 15,678.57 pesos. Plus the amount of interest given, 1,317 pesos. 1,317 pesos. And again, use your calculator to get the sum of the principal and the amount of interest, 1,317 pesos. 1,317 pesos. And you should get 16,995. 16,995. 57 pesos. Thus, the original amount of the loan is approximately 15,678.57 pesos. And this loan was borrowed at the rate of 0 0.056 or 5 and 3 pips percent simple interest rate. And the amount of interest on this original amount borrowed at this rate for one and a half years is 1,317 pesos. And the total amount 
paid for the loan is the original amount borrowed plus the amount of interest paid which gives us 16,995.57 pesos. This is the original amount, uh, sorry, this is the total amount paid by Mr. X for the loan. And this total amount includes the original amount borrowed P or principal of 15,678.57 pesos and the amount of interest on the loan of 1,317 pesos. For our third and last example, consider the following problem. Miss T borrowed 7,000 pesos and pays 7,237.65 pesos at the end at the end of 11 months. What simple interest rate was used? Again, the first step in solving a problem is to identify the information or data given in the problem. And the problem says, Miss T borrowed 7,000 pesos. And we know that the original amount borrowed is known as the principal denoted by capital T. The 7,000 pesos is the principal given. It is the original amount borrowed by Miss P. Hence, P equals 7,000 pesos. And the problem says Miss P pays 7,237.65 pesos, which is greater than, more than the original amount borrowed or principal of 7,000 pesos. Thus, we take 7,237.65 pesos as the total amount paid, denoted by capital A, equals 7,237.65 pesos. And this total amount paid by Miss T was made or paid at the end of 11 months. Hence, our T is 11 months. But in using the formula, we said earlier that the time should be in years. Thus, we have to convert 11 months to year by using the equivalent quantities. One year equals 12 months. To convert 11 months to year, we multiply 11 months by a conversion factor, which is actually a fraction obtained from this equivalent quantities. And we write 12 months in the denominator. So that months in the numerator and months in the denominator will cancel out. And we write one year in the numerator. And you can see months in the numerator and months in the denominator will cancel out. And we get, we have converted time from months to year. 11 months is equal to 11 divided by 12 year. 11 divided by 12 year. You may not write this in decimal number. You may substitute, uh, you may substitute the value of T in the formula as is 11 over 12. And now we identify the required or the unknowns in the problem. And there is only one unknown, what simple interest rate was used. And the uh, interest rate is denoted by small i. We write the required 
the small letter I to denote simple interest rate. And uh, to solve for the simple interest rate, we make use of the original formula for the amount of interest capital I equals principal multiplied by interest rate multiplied by time. And to solve for the interest rate from this formula, we divide both sides by PP. Divide the right side by PP. Divide the left side by PP. And PT will cancel out from the from the right hand side. And the simple interest rate I is equal to amount of interest capital I divided by PP. Amount of interest capital I divided by PP. This is the formula that we will use to solve for the simple interest rate. But the amount of interest capital I is not given in the problem. But we can solve for the amount of interest capital I. Because the total amount A and the principal P are given. Hence, before we can solve for simple interest rate small i, we have to solve first for the amount of interest capital I from the formula for total amount capital A equals principal plus the amount of interest. We solve for capital I from this equation for solving for total amount capital A by transposing the principal P to the left hand side of the equation. So we do that. The total amount capital I is now equal to total amount A the amount of interest capital I equals the total amount A minus the principal we transpose P the principal original amount borrowed to the left hand side and we take its opposite sign. Hence, from positive P, it becomes minus P. And this is the formula we will use to solve for the amount of interest. It is equal to the difference between the total amount paid and the original amount borrowed. After we have solved for the amount of interest, we can now solve for the Simple interest rate because we have solved for amount of interest capital I and we are given the principal 7,000 and the time P in years 11 over 12 year. We now solve for the unknown. The unknown is actually the simple interest rate I and we can solve for this unknown simple interest rate I using this formula equals amount of interest divided by principal times the time P in years. But we have to solve first for the amount of interest, capital I, given by this formula, amount of interest equals accumulated value or the total amount paid minus the principal. Hence, the amount of interest equals total amount paid, 7,237.65. Seven thousand two hundred thirty seven point sixty five minus the original amount borrowed or principal, which is equal to seven thousand pesos minus seven thousand pesos, and you can use your calculator to solve for the difference, and you should get. 237.65 pesos. 
Now we can solve for the simple interest rate I and it's equal to the amount of interest capital I which we have solved and is equal to 237.65 Divide by the principal, the original amount borrowed of 7,000 pesos. Multiply by the time in year. And our time in year is 11 over 12. 11 over 12. Again, use your calculator to solve for the value of a small i. And we have 237.65 in the numerator. 237.65 divided by 7,000. Multiply by 11. 11 over 12 is 11 divided by 12. Multiply by 11 divided by 12. And you should get 0 0.03. 0 0.03. Three seven zero three six three six three six point zero three seven zero three six. The digits three six are repeated without end. Now the simple interest rate is in decimal number. To convert this to percentage, you simply multiply this by 100 and you write the percentage sign. Multiply this by 100. You should get 3.70. 3.70. Three six, three six, three six percent. Again, the digits three six are repeated without n. And now we round this off to give our final answer to two decimal places. To round this up to two decimal places, you count three after the decimal point, one, two, three. Hence, three is the number, the digit to be rounded off. And since three is less than five, we simply drop three and all the digits to its right. And we do not add one to the preceding digit, the digit that comes before three, which is zero. Hence, the final answer to two decimal places is 3.3 3 point seven zero percent Now, you should not drop 0 here and give your answer as 3.7% for that would be only to one decimal place. We want the answer to two decimal places, so we retain a zero here, since the digit zero here is a significant digit. Without the zero here, your answer would be in one decimal place only. Hence, the amount of interest of 237.65 pesos earned by the original amount borrowed of 7,000 pesos was computed at simple interest rate of 3.70%. And 
this amount of interest was paid at the end of 11 months or 11 over 12 years. And the total amount to be paid, the total amount paid by Ms. T is equal to the original amount borrowed principal, 7,000, plus the amount of interest, 237.65 pesos, or a total amount of 7,237.65 pesos. For your practice, please do the following exercises. These problems, this, these problems in these exercises are similar to the examples we had earlier. Number one, Linda borrowed 12,000 and paid 13,075 pesos after six months. What was the simple rate of interest? The first thing that you will do is to identify the given information and data, or data, and then identify the unknown. And in number one, you have to convert six months to a year using the equivalent quantities, one year equals 12 months. Number two, an investment of 75,000 pesos accumulates to 77,194 pesos with interest at 6.34 percent. What is the period of investment? Again, the period of investment refers to the length of time that the original amount was invested. And uh, again, it is not specified that this is a simple interest rate and we said that whenever it's not specified whether the given rate is a simple interest rate, we take the given interest rate as simple interest rate. And number three, Liam paid 3,128 pesos interest for a loan at 5 and 2 over 7 percent at the end of 2 and 1 fourth years. This should be a period. What is the original amount of the loan? And the original amount of the loan is the same as the original amount borrowed and it's denoted by T for principal. The second question for problem number three is what is the total amount paid for the loan? And the total amount paid is the sum of the original amount borrowed plus the amount of interest paid. If you have questions about the lesson today, you ask your question in the comments below. And do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Art Kalisan. Thank you for being in this class today.